Francis, uh, in regard, like I, I would say for a lot of leaders uh, and a lot of believers out there, when they think of somebody who's pastoring, who has spiritual authority in the local church, they automatically just think of somebody who's being paid to do that as a full-time job. Um, could you like cast some vision for like, what does it look like for a you know teacher or a yeah construction worker to be a pastor? Like how, how do they pull that off? I think a lot of people look and go, that, that, that just doesn't seem to work. That's, that's actually good. As you were saying that, I was thinking, yeah, we have, some people have a natural respect for those who uh, work in a church. They are paid by the church. Um, so they assume that person is a professional um, whether they're living a godly life or not, whether they're close to Jesus or not, the position itself gives them uh, kind of a status in people's minds, which is, is not necessarily a bad thing uh, because we are supposed to honor people because of what, the position that God placed them in. Now, what I see biblically is Jesus comes along and it's his lifestyle um, the apostles, people are blown away because of their lifestyles. Uh, and there are those times in life when you meet someone and you respect them so much, you would just follow them because you see something in their lifestyle that, where you go, man, that guy's not normal. That guy really walks with Jesus. You know, it doesn't matter if he's on paid staff or whatever else. In fact, you have more of a chance of being that if you're not uh, on staff in a church. And so um, I think if people don't really look up to you, you know, sometimes people think, okay, people don't look up to me, so give me a position. Now, if you walk closely with Jesus, uh, if you know him and he hears your prayers and, and, and you... People will respect you and follow you. Um, so don't go thinking, you know, we just want to run and go, hey, can you give me a title of, you know, super pastor? And then people will come to my gathering because I was anointed by these elders as super pastor. Yeah, but is that really the way you want to do it? Or do you want to just be so godly, um, so close to Jesus? If someone is walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to follow him. It doesn't matter if he's a carpenter. Um, you know, you just go, whoa, that guy is powerful. And he has a peace and his kingdom is not of this world. Um, and he's grown in uh, uh, favor with God and man. Um, you're going to gravitate toward those people. So I would say aspire to be that. And don't worry about the title. We're just, we're not living in that kind of world anymore. And I don't know that we ever should have been. So good. Yeah. And I guess, you know, with that question too, is, you know, as we talk about maybe somebody who's been in pastoral ministry and they have a heart to pastor, they want to continue to shepherd, but they're looking at maybe they got to take on a job or they're trying to think, how could we empower people to shepherd who would be working normal jobs? I think a lot of people think if I've got 40 hours a week in my job and then I've got my family, how, how can I pull this off? Right. Cause our, our understanding is like, a little bit different in what it means to be a pastor right within we are church could you share some on that yeah if you're only working 40 hours a week like that's good for you um there are a lot of hours in the week like we don't realize there's just things you have to cut out like if you really you know i like how the phone shows you how much screen time you've had and uh you know, it's almost like a conviction moment, like, oh man, I spent way too much time on that thing. And then you start thinking through, you know, was it really work related, this and that. Um, I, I remember one time, uh, I think it was Piper that made a comment about, well, it's kind of good that uh, we have a record of how much time we spent on Facebook and, um, you know, I'm sure Netflix and everything else and YouTube, it, it's all in there somewhere. And, uh, you know, God can use that on Judgment Day. Uh, it's, not that he couldn't because he, he knew 
Um, but it, it just was a, it was almost like a reminder. And he certainly didn't say it like that. It's just something that's what it triggered in my mind. Like there's a lot of time wasted. It's a lot of time wasted thinking about yourself, pleasing yourself. Um, and I think you start realizing those things and, and, uh, you know, there's that old saying, like, if you need something done, uh, give it to someone who's busy. Um, those are the guys that know how to get things done. And they start thinking through, like, uh, you do. And in the busiest times of your life, when you value your family, you go, okay, uh, I don't have time to, I'm not going to have five hours with them tonight. And so if I've got an hour what am I going to do? Watch a TV show with them and all stare at a screen together. Um, I got to get creative and build those relationships and, and get deep and get to the, the heart of things. And, uh, you know, play Monopoly. At least we're talking. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's just, we keep saying there's not enough time, not enough time, but we can, we can make the time and uh, discipleship you know, you just, you just figure out at work, gosh, I'm with all these people, like, you know, right here in, uh, in Hong Kong, you know, I talk to people who, yeah, it's very, very normal to work 12 hours a week. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just, it's the reality of some of these people. And so they don't think, okay, I got to get home and, uh, you know, walk the streets and do evangelism like, it's like, well, I'm in this workplace with 2,000 people in my building. This is my mission field, and I'm going to go after it. I'm going to figure out how to do it. You know, you just, you just uh, adjust to whatever situation you are in. And it doesn't mean you don't pray for the grace of, God, give me uh, more time um, for the sake of your kingdom in this way or that way. It's kind of like uh, what, Jesus, what uh, Paul said. Um, where it's like, gosh, if you, if you can be free, go, go for it. Um, but if you can't, then just make the best of it right now. Don't make that the issue. Um, some of us are stuck in places. Uh, I will say sometimes we put ourselves in those places by not thinking through a simple way of living. And that's something that by the grace of God, you know, like, like Rob was saying, it's not something I worked at. I grew up poor. And so uh, when you grow up poor, you just kind of like, you, you know, as a kid, you realize, I didn't even know I was poor. So I realized, gosh, I keep wearing the same shirt every day. And other kids at school don't. Um, but, uh, you, you know, but you just, you learn to adjust and you just get used to like, I'm happy with a cheap meal. I'm more excited about a cheap meal. The better deal it is, the better it tastes to me. And, you know, you just, so, so I just, from day one, you know, told Lisa, like, I, I hope you don't mind where we live. I just like being with you. And if we have kids, I want to be with them. And I'd much rather be in a trailer with my kids than working my butt off to have a nice house. Like, I value time with people. Um, I value time in ministry. And, and we made decisions like, I don't ever want to say to the Lord, I can't do that uh, because we can't afford it. I said, so let's just try to find the cheapest way to live. So I never have to make that decision. Um, let's just try the wisest way. And I don't think a lot of people think that through. They just assume now I got to have cable TV. Now I got to have, you know, this, 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 whatever it is. It's amazing how much fun you can have with not a lot um, and how fulfilled you can be. Um, and then you later on, like I said, some of those decisions, you just start realizing, gosh, our relationship is better because we didn't have cable TV. My life is better because of some of those choices. And I didn't have the big house. Uh, so I spend less time cleaning and I, didn't have, and I didn't have to hire a maid and work even more hours. It's like, gosh, I, we have one room, you know, like what's a maid going to do? Uh, you know, it's like cleaning. Uh, there's just so many things we wasted time on that by going simpler actually made our lives better. 